What's going on, Gap Blatton people? Got a little load development going on today. Now this is my Bergara B14 and 6.5 Creedmoor. I've tried some 140 grain Match Kings that really weren't giving me the results I was looking for. So today, we're gonna be trying out and doing a little in the field load development with our mobile reloading station of the 130 grain Burger VLD Hunter. Now from the research I found online, they either like being jammed into the lands or they like a jump, it just depends on your rifle. So if these don't shoot good, I guess that's a waste of $50. Anyways, we've got the all the long range shooters of Utah or wherever, their 10 round load development test. We're gonna be going up from 42.5 to 44.3 in 0.2 grain increments. The weather data for today, service is kind of spotty out here, so I'll just have to go back and look it up. It said I was negative 32,000 feet above sea level. I don't think that's correct. Now these are loaded to just below mag length to feed in the ACIS mag here. So we'll see how that does. I will be single loading them for now but when I'm hunting, when I'm shooting, if they shoot good, they will be loaded to below mag length so they'll feed. Let's see what we got at 42.5. Also need to kind of zero the scope too. Hopefully it will still be on paper. Forty two seven. Hopefully on paper this time. Well, that's quite the jump. It's a hundred feet per second jump. All right, next we're sending forty two nine. Still well below Alliance max charge. Good old sock squeeze bag here. Twenty-eight seventy-one. Twenty-eight eighty. Twenty nine fifty eight. All right. This little flat spot's going to be here and a little bit less here. Not bad, not bad. Next 
that cratering's not bad. I've shot this reloader 16 in the winter, in the summer, and it seems like, like it says on the bottle, it's very temperature insensitive. I hadn't got a lot of wild velocity fluctuations among the wide range of temperatures we have in my area. So if you can just read this chicken scratch right here. This is what we ended up with. Really not much to go on, but it doesn't look like over those 10 shots we had a lot of spread over the paper, so looking pretty good. Okay, hopefully we'll stay in focus here for a little look at the crater, and this is the lower 43.3 to 43.7 group. Cratering really isn't that bad. These had a max spread of 16 feet per second. And the cratering's a little worse on these. These had a max spread of 15 feet per second. So one feet per second less spread on the high side here. But the cratering's a little worse. So I think I'm going to stick around that 43.5 and try those out. We'll load up five of those. Okay, so 43.5. And now let's dispense that, please. Running off an AC power inverter here to hopefully get this show on the road. Nice and nailed, fully prepped new Hornady brass here. Let's go ahead and spill all these my daughter bullets in this cow pasture right quick. There we go. Okay. Yeah. No, hopefully. Really need to move out of town. Like as soon as possible. And back it out just a little bit because I know if anything can go wrong it certainly will might not be good for deep priming but I think we can set bullets pretty well no idea what the wind might do to our data we will soon find out it's also lovely that it's constantly changing direction down I think I see impact it's a little hard to see with a six power scope on that. with a standard deviation of 8. Again, that's a 3 round. 
data group. But that's pretty good, an extreme spread of 16, which matches up perfectly with our flat spot test. Okay, so looking at our 10 round workup here, we can kind of disregard the spread just a little bit because that was prior to a bore sight. This was after the bore sight and this was with some adjustment. So. But it's good that they're all really grouped together like that even with the adjustments. Now as for our five shot, looking like a center to center, this isn't going to be exact, but looking at a center to center of just about 1.17. So it's a good start. That was our cold bore. And this is why you really need to shoot five shot groups because if we had a shot three like that we thought it was fantastic it looks like we need to either shoot another group to see how we're doing or we need to play around with the load development a little bit play around with some set depth but that standard deviation of eight is really impressive with an extreme spread of 16 just like our data showed so i may just load up five more and try for another little Okay. Now let's send five down there without the chronographic test. See what we got going on. Of course, right as I lay down, the wind picks right back up. Okay, now that's a lot more like it. Here's our cold bore. And then the rest of them are made a long hole, but one hole. Let's go ahead and get our unofficial center to center here. Looking right at an inch with the cold bore shot. So with the wind gusting as bad as it did today, um, and this right here, I'm really thinking this is going to be a pretty hot little load here. And for those of you who don't count flyers, yeah, I think this load has some great potential. Okay, so next day of testing, I backed up to 200 yards for these groups. The bottom one is for some reason the feed ramp in the Bergara is not in front of the magazine it's slightly behind that front lip of the magazine which is kind of strange but anyways so I uh, set those back to where they would feed from the magazine and from the weirdly placed feed ramp and my suspicions were confirmed a 0.064 jump was way too much see these just kind of went all over the place now as for single loading, and this is a four shot group, and I don't know about you, but this one looks a little bigger than the rest of them, so take that whichever way you will. Can't see any other impacts on the paper. That is phenomenal, but the only problem is if I had wanted a single shot rifle, I would have bought a single shot rifle. That's probably why we don't hear a lot about the uh, Burger VLD hunters because they just do not do good fed from a magazine. And there may be some rifles out there that can feed them from a magazine well. It's got like an extra long type of magazine. But in my specific rifle, it's way too much junk. They shoot good. It's just have no purpose for them. All right. Appreciate you watching. Y'all have a good one.